Hello Mountain View kids and families. This is Mrs. Martha coming to you again. This lesson is for Sunday, May 17th, 2020. And this is our second Mountain View Kids Corner message. And thank you for those of you that have subscribed and liked to our YouTube channel. Uh, remember it is Mountain View Kids Fontana. And please like, uh, subscribe and share to our video. Um, now, our news this week is I now have a um, email for our kids ministry. So it is kids at mvucc.org. So go ahead and you can email me through this link now. And um, if you are not already on my email list, um, please send me an email to this address and I will get you onto my email list and that will get you my weekly email which includes all the downloads which go along with our video. So if you're not already on my mailing list, um, make sure to send me an email and get on that list um, and then I'll get you on that right away. Okay, today's lesson is called Paul is Changed and it comes from Acts chapter 9 verses 1 through 19. Um, again, I'm using the Deep Blue One Room Sunday School materials by Abingdon Press. You can get the Deep Blue um, app on your phone, and that has the uh, story video from the company, as well as the Bible verse and the song on that. So if you don't already have that free app, um, go ahead and download that, and then you can also um, follow along on your app. Our Bible verse for the month of May is Acts 4.20, and here it is on the poster. And so I'm going to read that off to you again. It says, as for us, we can't stop speaking about what we have seen and heard, Acts 4.20. And this is Peter and John talking uh, when they were arrested for speaking about Jesus. And even though they were told by the Jewish authorities to stop talking about Jesus, they could not do that. They had to keep talking about Jesus. So that is our Bible verse uh, for the month of May. Now, um, I will be reading uh, the Bible from the uh, International Children's Bible, which is a version which is a little bit easier for kids to understand, and I'll be reading that uh, to you. Um, so our story is about uh, the Apostle Paul, who is probably the most famous um, apostle that Jesus had. He wrote a big chunk of the New Testament and um, traveled extensively um, during his lifetime sharing about Jesus. Um, today's story is about the time when Saul became a Christian. He was called Saul or Paul. Um, his Saul is his Jewish name and Paul is a Greek name. Um, our story takes place in um, about the year uh, AD 37, or about four years after Jesus was crucified and resurrected. Paul was about 30 years old at this time, so still a pretty young man. Um, uh, Paul, Paul or Saul, was born in the city of Tarsus, which is located in what is today um, the country of Turkey. So a little bit away um, from um, Israel where uh, most of our Bible stories take place. Paul was uh, a Roman citizen at that time, which had a lot of benefits um, that happened in his life because he was born in this Jewish, or I'm sorry, in this Roman uh, town of Tarsus. Um, he was raised, um, he had one um, Greek parent and one Jewish parent, and he was raised in the Jewish faith and became what they call a Pharisee, which was one of the Jewish uh, leaders uh, who was very well educated. Um, as a Pharisee, uh, he believed that Jesus was what they called a blasphemer, which means uh, somebody who uh, was not telling the truth about God's word. Um, they considered him to be a blasphemer because he, Jesus claimed to be the son of God, and that was a threat to the law that the Jews had been following that had come down from Moses. So Paul wanted to destroy the Christians and the Christian church at that time because he believed that they were not following God. But as we find out, God had a different plan for him. Um, the Bible calls... Um, him Saul all the way until Acts chapter 13 and then they switched to Paul and he changed his name basically because it showed that he went from 
uh, his Jewish background into more of his Christian background. So in the version that I'm reading you, it does call him Saul, but this is the Apostle Paul um, to start. I'm going to start reading um, Acts chapter 9 in verse 1. You can follow along if you have a Bible and you want to follow. In Jerusalem, Saul was still trying to frighten the followers of the Lord by saying he would kill them. So he went to the high priest and asked him to write letters to the synagogues in the city of Damascus. Now, Damascus was a little ways away from Jerusalem. It was not in the um, country of Israel at that time. It was a little bit a ways away. These letters that he had asked the high priest to, to give him were letters that authorized him to um, arrest Christians and put them on trial, and eventually to kill them. Paul wanted to stop everyone who believed in Jesus, and so with these letters, he had the legal authority to do that. Saul wanted the high priest to give him the authority to find people in Damascus who were followers of Christ's way. If he found any there, men or women, he would arrest them and bring them back to Jerusalem. So Saul went to Damascus. As he came near the city, a bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around him. Saul fell to the ground. He heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you doing things against me? Saul said, Who are you, Lord? The voice answered, I am Jesus. I am the one you are trying to hurt. Get up now and go into the city. Someone there will tell you what you must do. Now, Saul knew when he saw this bright light and the voice, he knew that was God, and he thought it was God, and then the voice tells him that he's Jesus. And Saul realizes now that everything that he had believed about Jesus was not quite right. The men traveling with Saul stood there, but they said nothing. They heard the voice, but they saw no one. Saul got up from the ground. He opened his eyes, but he could not see. So the man with Saul took his hand and led him into Damascus. For three days, Saul could not see, and he did not eat or drink. Saul obviously was very upset at this time. Everything that he had believed, he realized was not true, and he was very upset. That's why he didn't eat or drink. And God blinded him to show him that he had been what we call spiritually blind. He had not been aware of the truth of what was happening um, with Jesus. And so God actually caused him not to see for all these days. There was a follower of Jesus in Damascus named Ananias. The Lord spoke to Ananias in a vision. Ananias! Ananias answered, here I am, Lord. And again, here's another person who heard the voice of God and recognized that God was speaking to him. The Lord said to him, Get up and go to the street called Straight Street. Find the house of Judas. Ask for a man named Saul from the city of Tarsus. He is there now praying. Saul has seen a vision. In it, a man named Ananias comes to him and lays his hands on him. Then he sees again. But Ananias answered, Lord, many people have told me about this man and the terrible things he did to your people in Jerusalem. Now he has come here to Damascus. The leading priests have given him the power to arrest everyone who worships you. So Saul had a reputation, even in the city, which was quite a ways away from Jerusalem, people had heard about him arresting followers of Jesus, and they were very frightened of him. So Ananias' first thought is, this man is not a good guy. Why should I help him? He's going to come and arrest me, and this is not going to be a good thing. But the Lord said to Ananias, go, I have chosen Saul for an important work. He must tell about me to non-Jews, to kings, and to the people of Israel. I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And that did come true. God's prophecy came true. Paul suffered greatly um, to tell, telling about Jesus um, in, in the years to come. So Ananias went to the house of Judas. He laid his hands on Saul and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus sent me. He is the one you saw on the road on your way here. He sent me so that you can see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. 
Immediately, something that looked like fish scales fell from Saul's eyes. He was able to see again. Then Saul got up and was baptized. After eating some food, his strength returned. So Ananias was faithful to God's word, and he went to this house and talked to Paul and laid his hands on him, and he was able to, uh, Paul was able to see again. So he was obedient, and God had already given Paul a vision of Ananias, so he knew that this was going to happen and that he would be able to see again. And so God restored Paul's sight, and again, that was to show him that now he could see um, not only with his eyes, but he could see spiritually, he could see the truth of Jesus' word. And so uh, God restored his sight, and then Paul was able to see, he got baptized right away, and then he started his ministry um, to, as God had prophesied, not only to Jewish people, but to non-Jewish people, and even to kings, and all of that did happen in Paul's life. So Paul realized that he had been wrong. Everything that he had believed about Jesus was wrong. He thought he was serving God by persecuting Jesus and Jesus' followers, but really he was an enemy of God. He, uh, he had the right motivation. He was, thought he was serving God. He thought he was doing the right thing for God, but he was doing it the wrong way. He had actually been blind to God's truth. And went, after he encountered um, Jesus on the road to Damascus, he realized what God was doing through Jesus, and he decided right away. He didn't think about it. He didn't stop and think, you know, maybe I need to check this out a little bit more. He realized the, the truth of God's word, and he listened and he obeyed right away immediately and started following Jesus for the rest of his life. He changed completely, and that's sort of the point that we want to have in today's story. Once he met Jesus, Paul literally became a different person. He even changed his name from Saul to Paul to show that transformation in him. And we too, when we meet Jesus, God will change us completely. It doesn't mean you won't be who you are. You still will be yourself with your own personality, but God will change you so that you want to do things for Jesus, that you'll want to follow him, you'll want to meet with other believers and fellowship with them. You'll want to read the Bible and pray and do these things. God will change who we are um, inside as well. So God is, is that powerful. He can change us completely and cause us to do his will um, that he wants for us to do. So that's our point for our Bible lesson today. That's another great story from the Bible about how God did an absolute miracle in the life of Saul and changed him so that he became one of the greatest apostles and servants of the Lord that we've, we've ever had. Now, um, in the downloads that I'll be sending on our email, one of the things we're gonna do is, is our craft for this week. And our craft is what we call a luminaria. And it's like a little paper bag and you put a light inside it and the light here showing it's symbolic of the, the, um, the light shining down on Paul on the road to Damascus and how he was able to see. So the supplies you're going to need, you'll need a brown paper bag, um, you'll need a piece of cardboard and I just took a flap from a box, a cardboard box and just cut that off. It has to fit inside your paper bag, so you want to cut it about that size. You'll need, this is like an X-Acto knife. It's extremely sharp, so I would recommend having a grown-up or an older brother and sister helping you with that. Um, if you don't have one of these, you can use scissors. It'll just be a little bit harder to cut out your design. You'll need a piece of tissue paper, just about the size of your bag. A little bit smaller will be okay and then either some tape or some glue. And then you'll need a little light. And you can either use this as a, like a little battery powered tea light, which is safer. Or if you don't have one of those, a little tea light here that um, you can light with a candle, but be really careful if you use a candle. Um, and then it said in the bottom of your bag to either put some sand, and if you don't have sand, because we can't really get around too much right now, you can also use kitty litter. <laughs> so I have kitty litter around. I'm not going to use it in my bag, but you could use just a little bit. And the sand in the bottom of the bag is to weight it so it doesn't flop over. So especially if you're using an actual candle, make sure you put something heavy. If you don't have sand, maybe you can find some rocks in your backyard just to weight it down so that the bag doesn't fall over and 
you know, the flame light it up, that would not be a good idea. So what you do is with your pencil, you just make a design on your bag. You can draw it with your pencil. Um, I made a little design here. Um, and then once you've made your design, you used your craft knife, uh, you put your cardboard inside your bag. Let's do that real quick. Oops, I wanna rip it. And the reason you put the cardboard inside is so that when you cut the design, you don't cut all the way through your bag. Okay, so I've got that inside there. You cut, you make your design, and kind of like when you make your Halloween pumpkin, you don't want to make it too detailed. Um, it would be really hard to cut it out. Then with your craft blade, and I've already cut it out just to save time, you carefully go over the outline of it. And again, only use this if you've got a grown up or a, like a teenager who can use it because it is extremely sharp. Um, if you don't have one of those, again, you can cut out your design. It would just be a little bit harder to do. Once you've got that cut out, you just take out your cardboard and then you can see the design. And then you just slide your tissue paper into the bag. Behind it, like that. And then you can, if you have glue, you can glue it in or you can just tape it in, which is what I'm gonna do here. And you can tape it at the bottom too, so that it goes down. And then when you put your candle inside, it'll kind of glow. And it'll, then you'll be able to see your design and it'll be kind of cool. And the idea is you can put these outside. You can make a whole bunch of them if you wanted to. And sometimes people put them outside by their driveway or something. You could even put, maybe put it in your window or just in your, on a table in your house. And the idea is to remember the light shining down from heaven and how that changed Paul. And so that's our craft for this week. And in our downloads, again, you will receive the instructions for that. So if you want to make a luminaria, you can do that. Um, we also have a couple puzzle pages in the um, download that you'll get this week, as well as um, a little family devotional as well that you can do with your family with our Bible verse and um, our Bible lesson on it that as well. All right, so I'm going to pray real quick and then um, we will be done. Dear Jesus, I thank you for this time and this lesson about your Apostle Paul and I just pray for each child and family who's watching, Lord, that they will um, see the light of you, Lord, that you will go into each of them and that you will um, change them to, to want to do your will and that they will become um, strong followers of you, Lord. Um, I pray this for all the children and families watching that today, Lord. I ask that you bless each of these families during this time and that um, they will have just a wonderful week and I pray these things in Jesus' name, amen. All right, well, that's my lesson for today, for this week. And remember to like and subscribe and share this video on our um, YouTube channel. And again, here is my email, kids at mvucc.org, if you want to get on my mailing list um, so you get the downloads. If you have prayer requests, um, this is how you can get a hold of me. So um, thank you for watching, and I will see you again. Bye-bye.